Hounds and welcome back to a brand new vlog from me, Hayley from Hayley's Horror Reviews and lovehorror.co.uk. I'm Darren Gaskell, I write for The Horrorcist. Uh, we're here to bring you all the news and reviews from the 11th edition of Sally Rose Screams uh, from the very heart of Sheffield. Interesting lineup this year, lots and lots of strong films, I think you'll agree. Yeah, and a few with some content warnings as well, which is very exciting. Yes, yes, there's one particular one that I'm, well, I'm not saying looking forward to see. There's a, there's a movie called The Golden Glove, which is about a German serial killer based on a real life case. So that should be quite interesting. Um, elsewhere in the festival we've got Joe Bigos's Bliss, which is a uh, psychedelic vampire movie from what I can gather. You've got to have something psychedelic. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Just to trip you out. Yeah. yeah. And of course we have the um, highly anticipated Antrim as well, the deadliest film ever made. Yes. Talking so, of content warnings. So. so if we don't make it out of Antrim, we're sorry, but this is yeah. the this is the last recorded documents of us yeah. talking about horror movies yeah. so you know if Antrim finishes us off you know you know it is genuinely the deadliest film ever made and this will be like the short version of Blair Witch Project but probably not as good <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned horror hounds and enjoy seriously welcome everybody uh, it's really good to see you all here um, do me a favor um, could you put your hands up if you are new here if you've never been here before okay keep your hands up everybody else take a look around Give them a big smile, give them a wave. <laughs> See how welcoming we are here. You're getting smiles and waves from strangers. It's just how it works here. This is Yorkshire. Yeah, that's, right. that's exactly right. Sheffield, which has been set up specially for the Cellulite Screams Festival. We're going to have a quick discussion about the two movies that were screened on day one of the festival. Firstly, Richard Bates's Tone Deaf. This isn't actually a video of the film itself, it's just a mock-up, but it's a very good one. Um, Tone Deaf, it's, it shares quite a lot of the DNA of Richard Bates's other movies, like Trash Fire, Bits of Urban Gothic, it's very acerbic. Um, there's lots and lots of black comedy. It maybe doesn't scale the heights of Trash Fire, but it's a very, very good watch. Robert Patrick is absolutely amazing and his performance is terrific. Um, Amanda Crew in a slightly less showy role, but sort of bringing all that millennial angst and yeah. entitlement to it. And I, I quite enjoyed it overall. I completely agree. And um, her performance is very charismatic. She's a really great actress. She keeps you invested in the story and what's going to happen. Um, I yeah, really enjoyed it. You said it shares DNA with um, his other movies. Um, and there's a bit of excision in there with kind of this really surreal um, dream sequence imagery that, um, yeah, kind of clever, clever like internalises what this... Um, Guy's um, like feeling his anger towards like the millennial generation. So it's it's quite fun. It's it's a really fun watch. Doesn't take itself too seriously. Does what it needs to do and knows exactly what film it wants to be. So yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Great opening film. Yeah. 
if you if you actually don't mind fourth wall breaking as well, because yeah. there's a couple of bits where Patrick's addressing the audience directly with these kind of vitriolic rants about what's wrong with society. Now, if you're not a big fan of that, that might put you off. I thought personally they were hilarious and he sold it really well, but you know it's just a bit of a warning if you don't like people talking directly to you from the camera. Yeah, I think it makes it a bit quirky and again it's like um, lends itself to his usual style. So yeah. that was definitely. And then following that we had the highly anticipated. Girl on the Third Floor, which is a haunted house movie, I believe shot in an actual haunted house, uh, which is really quite cool. It reminds me a lot of American Horror Story Murder House, if I'm honest. I really did enjoy it though. I think um, it's like it keeps you engaged and um, you want to see where it's going to go next. It's not like reliant heavily on jump scares or anything like that. It doesn't go for the obvious tropes too much, a little bit. But um, it's, yeah, it's quite an entertaining watch, I would say. Yeah, I agree with you about the murder house comparisons. There's, there's very much, you know, it, it, you could see sort of little traces of that in there. I probably didn't come down quite as often. I did enjoy it and it's engaging and I did want to see where it went next. It doesn't wander too far off the map in terms of where it's going. So it left me a little bit disappointed in the end. But having said that, it's very well made. Um, CM Punk gives a really good performance. Kind of Bruce Campbell-esque. Yeah. Although I was thinking of that throughout the movie. That doesn't detract from his performance. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a good watch. And I think when you set it against all the other stuff you've watched this year, I think coming in I had quite high expectations and maybe it didn't quite scale the heights. But it's still very well worth a watch. Apart from the fact that, can you please stop killing family pets in yeah. movies? I'm sorry. You know, it's a, Spoiler warning. Yeah, I'm sorry, but if you like... As soon as you see a dog or a cat, you think, yeah, how long is the dog or the cat going to last? Well, longer than normal in this movie, but, you know, the dog does make a quite nasty fair. And the dog was my favourite character, I have yeah. to say. The acting was so good. Yeah, um, the dog's great. And the lead character, he's not the most empathetic of characters, I would say. Um, so you're not totally, like, um, feeling sorry for him throughout. And um, you kind of think he's going to get what's coming to him, in a way. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, he uh, does things that aren't particularly... Uh, nice really. So. But yeah, overall a, a decent watch and, and a pretty solid first day for the festival. Yeah, so uh, we'll be back with more reviews uh, later on to keep watching this vlog and thank you for watching so far. Thank you. So thank you for sticking with us if you've been watching so far our Sunday Screams 2019 vlog. Um, I'm going to leave the frame in just one second because Darren watched a depraved film and he's going to tell you all about it. Here's Darren with the Golden Glove. Okay, so The Golden Globe. It's a true life crime drama based on the uh, actual events that took place in Hamburg in the 1970s concerning a man called Fritz Honker, who basically wasn't a particularly nice guy. He kind of preyed on the vulnerable in society. He didn't have a particularly good lifestyle himself. And this is very much a, a downbeat, grimy trudge through the guy's life. It's uh, two hours long. Um, it's, it doesn't feel any of those two hours um, but equally it's a bit of a challenge for people who would normally expect their true life dramas to be a little bit more glossy this is scuzzy and authentically sleazy um, it's it's very responsibly made um, there are a couple of big companies behind it Warner Brothers Entertainment uh, is to do with it also Pathé um, brilliant central performance from uh, Jonas Dassler uh, the, the violence is undoubtedly disturbing, but it's all in context. Um, it's, it's very, very disturbing, but it's responsibly made. The treatment of the serial killer's life is not glamorised in any way, shape or form. It's an excellently made film, um, beautifully shot. Um, it's, it, it kind of has parallels with Snowtown, which I saw in 2011, in that although I really enjoy the experience of watching the movie, I'm thinking that maybe it's a movie I'm not going to go back to in the near future, maybe ever again. However, to the makers of the Golden Glove, excellent movie. I would recommend it to anybody who likes their cinema a little bit more challenging. And I'm back in the room. So a film we both watched was Antrim, which has been hyped up like months before the first, as soon as it was announced on the schedule this year. It was very hyped up. It is called Antrim, the deadliest film ever made. It's allegedly cursed and um, you have something like 24 hours to live 
after watching this movie. So um, we were quite excited because something so with such a bold statement would suggest that this is going to be um, an unforgettable movie that uh, will stick with you and haunt you long after viewing. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a very strange one, Antrim. Um, the framing device uh, the, the book ends the movie is a is a mini documentary about how they came to source the movie and you get academics discussing the effect of particular techniques involved in the movie like um, subliminally inserted frames, uh, the effects that they've uh, they've changed the sound in some way and and the actual sort of the book ending of it is quite interesting and arguably more interesting than the film that's in the middle of it. Yeah, I would completely agree with that. It's just like how certain techniques used in film can you be like used to manipulate the viewer and make them uh, fearful in a certain way of the film. Like, and that is particularly clever. But the content itself, it was just pretty tedious. It was just it just didn't really like go anywhere. Nothing particularly horrifying happened as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know we are pretty desensitised horror viewers. We watch a lot of horror horror films, and that is why you're here watching us. We assume. Um, but yeah, I, I was just kind of um, underwhelmed by it and let down. Yeah, I think um, in some ways it could never live up to the hype, but I mean, it really, it didn't live up to the hype and then so. Um, a couple of the moments in the movie are genuinely nervous. There's a couple of good images. Um, if you want to see the movie, I won't spoil what they are. There's a, there's a, very, there's a very interesting um, device that comes into play towards the end of the movie. Um, which kind of shows a bit of savage imagination on the part of the filmmakers, um, but really, uh, I'm I'm completely with you. It doesn't it doesn't go anywhere particularly interesting over its running time, and and although the the concept of of Antrim is a fun one, I kind of expected to enjoy it a lot more than I did. Having said that, if we're both dead within 24 hours, sorry, Antrim. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just um, thought I was sitting there. The only thing I was actually fearful of that I was the only person in the audience not enjoying it or not getting it. And then I've come out and spoken to um, various people who shared the same thoughts. No one's like being like, oh my God, that was amazing. That was groundbreaking. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Um, I think that's what we wanted, something that was really going to stick with us. Because as I said, as desensitised horror fans, we need something that's really going to get under our skin in a disturbing way. Something that's going to haunt us. Um, when we go to bed tonight, that is what you want. But unfortunately, uh, Antrim didn't deliver, and I'm really disappointed because that was the film I thought this is something innovative, exciting, and I say it just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just feel a little deflated. But you know, these, it's it's a wide ranging festival, and there's all sorts. But there's an eclectic mix of movies, and there's something for everybody. Maybe. Antrim did float the boat of some of the people out there. It just it didn't float mine, and I'm pretty sure it didn't float yours either. Yeah, definitely. So uh, stick with us, and we're going we're to bring you some more content from Sally Boy Screams 2019. Uh, we've got bucket loads to get through, so uh, enjoy. Hello, and you are currently watching Celluloid Screams Day 3. We are on the Saturday portion of the festival, but we are just going to talk about the three movies that we saw last night, um, which closed off Day 2. Uh, first off was Extraordinary, which I think was a crowd pleaser. Excellent, yeah. Really, really well done. Uh, it's the story of a uh, driving instructor uh, in Ireland who has a sideline of being able to communicate with the dead, and she's dragged back into her past life when uh, one of the locals has his daughter possessed by a, um, a nefarious rock star, played yeah. by Will Fort, who is trying to get his success back after a, he was a one-hit wonder, basically, and his albums have all failed since then. He's communicating with the devil to try and get some of that mojo back. Um, it's been described as Father Ted meets The Exorcist, and it's as good as both of those. It's absolutely hilarious. It's beautifully played. Um, even if you don't like horror, I would suggest that you give this one a whirl because it's so funny. It's very accessible, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's got so much humour in it. It's like a dark comedy with horror elements. Um, yeah, really good fun, perfect festival film. So it's so um, great to hear that people really enjoyed it. There's a lot of laughter in the audience. Um, then we had the first secret film. So this year we have two secret films, which is just absolutely awesome. I love it. Um, and we were not disappointed. As soon as it was revealed what the film was. I was like, yes, because I never thought I'd get to see that this year. So <laughs> it was pretty cool. And that film was? 
uh, Colour Out of Space, uh, based on the H.P. Lovecraft novel and directed by Richard Stanley. And what a trip it was. Psychedelia, yeah. um, alien, alien um, landings, Nick Cage, Nicolas Cage going yeah. full on. Yeah, Nicholas Cage being Nicholas Cage shouting about alpacas, <laughs> which is just like, sounds batshit bizarre, but yeah, it's it's just um, absolutely brilliant. Um, really engaging story, great comeback for Richard Stanley as well. It's his first feature film that he's done since The Island of Dr. Moreau, which was a really controversial, um, you know, a very turbulent um, production, and there's a great documentary on that on the sideline um, to check out. Um, but yeah, he did an amazing job with this film. It's so polished, it was just the visuals were just so like hypnotic and enticing. It was just a beautiful film, but also had that, you know, layer of Nicolas Cage just being Nicolas Cage. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean if you want if you want in your cage rage, there's not quite as much in this movie as there was in something like Mandy, but Towards the end, you're not going to be disappointed. He absolutely, he just goes full on batshit at one point in the movie, which is, which is, I mean, I think Cage has been, has become something of a joke in recent years, but generally he gives quite good performances in this, and he's a little bit more measured in this one. I thought and, that too, yeah, yeah, it was very like downplayed for him. I yeah. thought, oh, actually, he's being a lot more subtle than he usually is, but then yeah. no, it soon came out. <laughs> what, what, um, you know, like events transpired. Um, yeah, things uh, just went the usual cage way, which I really, <laughs> yeah. really enjoyed. Um, oh, if you get to see it, it's, it's well worth it, and um, it is probably one of the strongest, um, most talked about films of 2019. Absolutely. And to close things off last night, we had a really fun movie, Corporate Animals, uh, directed by Patrick Bryce, who is known for the creep films, which we're huge fans of anyway. Really, really good. Um, and this one was, again, like I would describe situational horror. Because it's um, basically this um, group like of um, workmates going on this expedition, this caving like ex expedition. Um, so like team building uh, weekend and um, all sorts of like sort of um, like things come out between them um, in terms of like um, all the kind of like agitations they have for each other in the workplace. It, it's all kind of heightened because they're in this situation. And it stars Demi Moore, and she is absolutely in this film, like really, really great performance, yeah. like she does not hold back. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see somebody like Demi Moore in this movie because it kind of, she isn't taking herself very seriously in this, but she's really, and then again, I think Demi Moore, like Nick Cage, has, you know, has become something of a bit of a, like, a, a figure of fun over the years, just because, mainly because of her lifestyle rather than the movies that she's in, but she's, she's always giving good performances, yeah. and in this one it's no exception, she's really good. Um, I mean, Patrick Bryce was a little bit reticent apparently to have this screener because he said, well, it's more of a comedy. Well, it is more of a comedy, but there's some fairly dark stuff going on in yeah. here as well. I mean, it does broach the subject of cannibalism in yeah. quite a gruesome way, um, and, there's, I mean, and, and there's lots of barbed sniping between everybody, so even though it's kind of badged as a comedy, it's, it's still got quite a few elements of horror. Yeah, there's definitely lots of gore for good measure. Mm. And um, yeah, it's that whole thing where um, people are stuck in this situation that they don't want to be in and um, they all kind of, you know, turn on each other. It's like survival of the fittest and that is a very, like, um, like a trope that is in horror anyway. So um, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, it's, I'd say situational horror comedy, um, a great midnight film, perfect way to close things, leave things on a high for day two. Uh, we're about to watch Outback, that's the next film, and we've got plenty of exciting things today. We've got Come to Daddy, which I've already seen and absolutely adore, that's one of my favourites this year. There's also Bliss closing off tonight as well, and also um, The Nightingale as well, which has had a lot of um, press tension. Yeah, good, good day today, lots yeah. and lots of stuff I'm looking forward to, so you know, yeah. we'll, we'll be reporting back on yeah. those we'll in due course. Posted. Yeah, thank you for watching. See you later, guys. It is the final day of Sandy Lloyd Screams 2019 today. We cannot get over how fast um, it's flown by. Um, we're going to provide you now with coverage of what happened on day three, um, which was uh, Saturday, the Saturday portion of the festival. Um, so the first movie that was shown was an Australian film called Outback, and it's that classic tourist trap type. Uh, style of film uh, where there's a couple who um, decide to uh, take a visit to the outback um, where they've got no supplies, which is a bit of a silly yes. yeah. decision. There's a lot of silly decision making in this film. Um, it's yeah, it's that whole thing of like how nature is the like biggest danger, biggest threat to like mankind type of vibe. 
and um, to like appreciate what you have while you have it. It was really like a melancholic film. It's this couple, they um, had a bit of a turbulent relationship and um, you know they were on this, this vacation together and it wasn't going particularly well and it only goes from bad to worse and it's just like this kind of ordeal survival. Horror. So um, yeah, it was it was all right. It was Content. fine. Yeah, yeah, it, it did what it was, did quite well. Um, my alternative title for the film is Two Dumbasses, because these people make the worst decisions that you could entirely make out there. Um, my outback driving safety tips: take a map, don't trust the sat nav, get a load of supplies before you go there. Don't kind of drive down the dirt roads and think, oh yes, you know, Air's Rock will be at the end of this. Uh, it generally isn't. Stick to the main roads, guys. Yeah. As far as the performances go, they were very good. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah, and the and the relationship is done in quite a, a quite a naturalistic way. So yeah. um, overall, pretty decent movie. I was just frustrated at just how idiotic the main two characters were, but you kind of have to have people make daft decisions because if they'd have just said, you know what, we'll stick to the main road, no movie. And we'll bring supplies of water which would have helped them a lot. I mean, yeah. I'm at a horror festival and I brought supplies of water. <laughs> and I'm not going out into the desert, so you know, that was a bit of a dumb decision, but yeah. um, you know, a horror movie is what it is. Yeah, it's Sheffield though, it's a wilderness out there. <laughs> Um, following on from that was a film called Making Monsters, which kind of uh, makes a uh, cutthroat commentary on the uh, vloggers. Not us. <laughs> no, um, so the kind of like um, vloggers that have like 10 million subscribers. Um, so uh, that are, f are famous for uh, just uh, asking around on the internet, essentially. Yeah, my kind of, uh, the, the things I never really look at in YouTube, like the prank videos, um, and the main guy, he's, he's a bit of a dick, it yeah. has to be said. Um, but they get invited out to a, a church um, in rural America. Um, he meets a friend he hasn't seen for a long time, and they go for a weekend, and then they meet this guy's boyfriend and he cooks them dinner and then of course, you know, with, with it being a horror film, something else is going on, something far more sinister. Yeah, something far more sinister that isn't really elaborated on in a lot of bits. There's things that kind of happen and don't go anywhere. Um, the payoff is quite good, I will say, like, you know, I did enjoy the film, it, it's not like bad, it's just the kind of thing that I may have preferred just to watch on Netflix at home rather than like, I would have like sought it out and gone to the cinema. Um, having known like what it is now. Really. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's certainly elements of the plot which are quite interesting. There's a supernatural uh, element that's drawn in, yeah. but that doesn't really seem to go anywhere. It's not. It's not elaborated upon at any length. And um, I found that the most interesting bit of the movie, and it really doesn't. You know, they don't take it anywhere, which I found slightly frustrating. Yeah. But again, overall, entertaining enough. You know, quite a you know, nice little payoff. Quite gory. Uh, Pretty much a crowd pleasing movie, but I kind of wanted a little bit more out of it. Yeah, definitely felt that there was that something that could have been built on a bit more, um, just needed a little bit more content there. Um, but then I guess that's that can be vlogging sometimes. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so that that was um, that. And then there was a big film next, which was Jennifer Kent, who directed The Babadook, her latest film, uh, The Nightingale, um, which was distressing from what I hear. I did. I gave it a chance, like those who know me know that there's certain um, things in horror movies that I'm not comfortable watching, um, so animal cruelty is not something that I particularly like to watch or um, any sort of violence against children or sexual violence, and this film does come with heavy sexual violence content warnings, but I thought I'm not going to dismiss the film, I will go in and, and give it a chance, um, but it wasn't for me, so I made that decision, no, I'm going to uh, step out of this one, um, but Darren here watched the whole entirety, so yes. he's going to let you know a bit more about that in the next clip. Yes. Uh, Jennifer Kent's The Nightingale is her follow-up to The Babadook. Um, tonally and in and, and every other way, it could not be further from the Babadook. Uh, essentially what you've got here is a revisionist western set in uh, colonial Australia and it's a document of just how horrible the English people were to the people over there, convicts, uh, the Aborigines, and it focuses on a, a woman who is trying to gain her freedom. Obviously, she's been convicted in Ireland. She's been shipped out to Australia. She's been working for the soldiers. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's her trying to gain her freedom from a particularly nasty 
English officer, um, and at one point, uh, you know, she's she's her husband is very frustrated at how they're both being treated, and it all comes to a head one night when he goes to the Pope and he punches the officer, and then they come back to exact their revenge in a sequence which is pretty much one of the most grueling and hard to watch scenes in any movie I've ever seen. I completely understand the people that walked out in there. Um, if you're going to get the cellulose screams crowd to gasp at sequences, you know how powerful that sequence is. It's, it's brilliantly shot, but at the same time it's absolutely jaw-dropping and I was numb for a few minutes afterwards. The rest of the movie follows. Um, a, a revenge sort of pursuit plot, very classic western. Um, it, it also touches on um, Aboriginal customs and, and their frustration at people invading their land. Um, it may be a wee bit too long at 136 minutes, but it is absolutely beautifully made. Um, it's got a slew of brilliant performances. Uh, it's a very, very difficult watch though. It's something that I'm not sure I'll go back to again. But kudos to cellulose screens because this proves that they'll program anything that's not just standard mainstream horror. In fact, it's it's almost not your standard mainstream horror. It's, it kind of it goes in places. It's very much a drama with horrific elements. But um, I'm I'm glad I saw it. I'm not sure I want to watch it again. But um, you know, thanks to cellulose screens for programming it. It gives people to watch the opportunity to watch these sorts of things. Um, it's recommended but with extreme caution. I would, I would go into it um, researching exactly what sort of content's in this movie because I, I wouldn't want people to go in blind because it's very, very strong stuff. Even in these days, I, it's, it was, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of genre movies and it shocked even me. So this is just, you know, brilliant, brilliant movie making but recommended with caution. And now we're going to talk about something a little bit lighter. So I think um, the way the programming went yesterday, this was the perfect film to follow uh, Nightingale, just to give people complete contrast. And that is Antipson's Come to Daddy, which is probably one of my favourite movies from the genre this year. Um, I reviewed it prior to the festival as part of uh, lovehorror.co.uk's Fright Fest content, so I will um, link that review below in the description box for you if you want to go and check that out. It's non-spoilery. Um, Come to Daddy is a film that you should approach uh, knowing very little about it. It stars Elijah Wood, who um, I think is brilliant. Like, he's like one of my favourite genre actors in um, probably more recent times, for sure, since, well, Maniac. Yeah. So yeah. he's amazing in Maniac, and this is like a completely different performance, but still as amazing. Um, it's got so many twists and turns, um, and um, it's beautifully shot. It's really, really um, just such a great film, and the direction you think it's going to go in kind of turns itself on its head a bit. So I think that's all I want to say because I really want people to watch this movie and um, have the full impact, like you know yeah. we did uh, when we got to see it. So um, yeah, Come to Daddy is probably I think has a high chance of um, being like one of the top films of this, this festival. Yeah, it's hard to actually talk about the movie without spoiling any of it at all, so I don't really know what I'm going to say about it, other than the performances <laughs> are really good, and it's really refreshing, even now, to see a movie where 20 minutes in you think, I have no idea where this is going, and then about 40 minutes in thinking, I really have no idea where this is going now, and being quite delighted about the outcome. Um, yeah. There's some absolutely hilarious sequences in it, the dialogue's fantastic. Um, there's some um, comedic but quite graphic violence in it, um, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, I think that, that sums it up. But please watch Come to Daddy if you get the opportunity. It is fantastic and you won't, will not be disappointed. As you say, it's the type of movie that you go in, you don't know what's coming, you still don't know what's coming, but you just want to um, remain eagle-eyed and just continue watching. So, yeah. So, yeah, Come to Daddy. Watch Excellent it. movie. <laughs> And uh, finally, the uh, closing film of Night 3 was a film called Bliss that Darren is going to tell you all about in the next clip. Right, I'm here to tell you very briefly about Joe B. Goss's Bliss. Um, Joe B. Goss is a, is a filmmaker that's um, almost human a few years ago, screened here. Um, this is his latest, uh, focusing on an artist, uh, played by Dora Madison, who is 
having a bit of a creative block is stuck on a piece of work, uh, but mainly because she's out clubbing and partying and drinking and taking drugs most of the time, which kind of isn't, isn't really stirring the creative process for her, until one fateful night uh, she, uh, she awakes from not really having much memory of the night before, but has a really big creative burst. Turns out that um, she's become a vampire. Um, in a very strange way, and it kind of follows her around for the rest of the movie um, as she deals with, you know, comes to terms with, you know, her new sort of powers and a new creative streak. Obviously, the creative streak works better when she's been feeding on people, so there's a lot of graphic bloodletting sequences in there. Um, as a as a movie experience, Bliss is the kind of movie where you'll probably either love it or hate it because it's 80 minutes of absolutely relentless. Um, vivid visuals, pulsing soundtrack, performances that, at, at, well, they start kind of here in terms of intensity and then kind of go there. Um, it's, I, I loved it personally. I know a few people weren't so hot on it coming out of the screening yesterday, but if you, if you want to immerse yourself in that world and you can go with it, then I would highly recommend it. It's brilliant. Oh, and by the way, Norm from Cheers is in this. Um, spoiler alert, it doesn't end well for Norm. Okay, welcome back to our next clip where we're going to talk more movies. We are well into day four now, so uh, we have three movies to discuss with you. Uh, the first one was Why Don't We Just Die? It's a Russian film and oh my god, everyone needs to see this. This is probably like so far my favourite of the year, like nothing has surpassed this for me yet. It's ultra violent, ultra stylish, and it's just like got so many twists and turns. It's absolutely brutal, but and it's just so funny as well. And it's just honestly one of the best films this year. It's not strictly horror, horror, but I think because of all the bloodshed in it, it can be classed as horror. But um, absolutely went down a storm here, which I'm so pleased about. And it'll be coming out on Arrow Video um, probably in the new year, around then. Yeah, I think it's still in the new year. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree with that. This is a great movie. Um, Somebody came out saying it was very Tarantino-esque. I think that's a bit harsh on this movie because Tarantino's recent album has been a bit jolly. This is really, really, really good. <laughs> oh god, um, yeah. This is once upon a time in Hollywood, for example. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the violence is comedic. There's lots of slapstick. Um, it's a really fun audience movie. Um, if you get to see it with a big crowd, do so because it went down the storm here. I think it's a really good. It's, I mean, it's a really good popcorn Friday night movie. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, and you will get a chance to see it if you come to the Abattoir Horror Festival, because um, it will be playing there as well. So um, I'd highly recommend checking it out. It is just raucous fun. Yeah, probably be seeing that there. again. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm definitely going to give it a second watch. Yeah, definitely, me too. And um, the next film was Daniel Isn't Real, directed by Adam Egypt Mortimer, who also directed Some Kind of Hate a couple of years ago. Um, I wasn't really into this film, um, I think I found it a bit problematic because obviously it's taking an issue of mental health and it's turning it into this horror, like farcical, over the top kind of context and I wasn't sure, I felt completely comfortable with the direction it went in. I mean it was you know, very well made, um, you know, there was great special effects in it and some of the scenes were very inventive, some of the way the directions it went in. but. It wasn't for me, and I know it's got a lot of buzz around it, and you know, that's fair. I'm glad you know there is an audience for it, but it wasn't to my taste. Yeah, I agree as well. Creatively, it's excellent. There are some very imaginative scenes in there, uh, but I think it's got a tin ear for dealing with mental health issues. I found it a little bit insensitive. Um, when, when, I mean, the, the thing I was thinking of all the time was Drop Dead Fred. That sort yeah. of goes the back of my mind. And when Drop Dead Fred deals with that kind of issue in a more sensitive and, and a more insightful way than the movie, then you know that something's got a problem. I particularly didn't like some kind of hate either. No, um, unfortunately, this, I mean, it's a step up from some kind of hate, but again, didn't really do it for me. But, you know, if you like this sort of thing, it may find its audience, you know, check it out, but for me, not really. Fair enough. And then Darren viewed um, After Midnight uh, by Jeremy Gardner. Yes, uh, After Midnight. I'm trying not to spoil After Midnight because you kind of want to go into this as blind as you possibly can. Uh, I was expecting one thing, I got something completely different. But all I will say 
is it's unexpectedly sweet, it's really well written, it's a bit of a slow burner so stick with it and it has got one of the most hilarious jump scares I've seen in any movie for years but that's all I'm saying. Well that sounds great to me so I will be sure to check that out because that is out on release and also by our video I believe as well. So, so all we have left now is secret film number yeah. two. Um, we are hoping it's going to be synchronic. So once like we'll be back later on in the next clip obviously uh, to reveal what it was but we're keeping our fingers crossed because there was a short um, screen before after midnight that was um, produced by Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson. So we're wondering is that a little like clue? Um, other um, things people are hoping for I think is the, a film called The Lodge and then also The Lighthouse as well. That's one of the ones that people are throwing around out there but yeah. it might be either of them or something completely different that we're not expecting. So. I would be satisfied if it was any of those, yeah. uh, but secretly, come on Synchronic, yes. come on. Yeah, yeah, we're hoping for that. So uh, we'll be back shortly to uh, close off our vlog, tell you all about Secret Film and Little Monsters as well, which is part of the closing gala, and then Darren is going to sing. <laughs> not on camera, sorry guys. <laughs> Horror, Horror Happens Radio, we had uh, Tanya Morissette from Fantasia Film Festival in Montreal and also uh, Giles Edwards who was one of the producers from Queensbury Pictures who produced Girl on the First Floor. Uh, those guys were, have basically watched all of the shorts uh, and have come to the decision, the following decision. So the Bronze Award for short film, um, they've re written a little bit to go with each one. So they, the Bronze Award is described as a superb twist on a classic formula and my phone's gone dead um, <laughs> proves the ingenuity of great storytelling is alive and well and a beautifully rendered tale of tragic terror uh, so the bronze award for best short film of several of the screens 2019 goes to fears <laughs> the, uh, the silver award is described as Elegant and deft, and it's a superb reminder that the effective and potent genre filmmaking can be as easily focused on mankind as it can be on monsters. An exquisitely chilling tale of human horror. So the Silver Award for Best Short Film goes to Half. Which brings me to the Best Short Film overall, the Gold Award. Um, from its slowly creeping dread to its frightening climax, this film offers an original take on the genre and delivers intense scares from start to finish. The sheer terror brought on by witnessing the contents of the box <laughs> makes this film one of the most successful horror shorts in recent memory. So the Gold Award for Best Short Film goes to the other side of the box. Should we take one each? One each. This is the Audience Award for Best Feature Film. So, you want to do three, two... Okay, so, in third place, we have The Nightingale. In second place, Why Don't You Just Die? And, I'll just notice John's shoes. Amazing. We'll talk about that afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the audience award for best feature film, as voted for by you guys, um, for Celebrity Dreams 2019, is extraordinary. <laughs> so, we, we will be informing all the filmmakers, but um, if if you go out, if you have the chance to go out and support it and see it again, please do so. Um, it's kind of on kind of exclusive with an, with Odeon I think at the moment but they are going to be opening up to more screens so tell your friends go go see it again tell everyone because as you know it is amazing. So that's it. Isn't it? That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. There was just one thing I wanted to add I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you um, because from chatting to people over the course of the weekend and chatting to people in the bar people who have never been before who are just coming for one or two films the thing I heard over and over again this year was how lovely the atmosphere was and how much everyone was just genuinely, like, genuinely enjoying themselves in here. They said the atmosphere was wonderful. And like, obviously we work really hard to put these films on for you, but like, a lot of that amazing atmosphere is down to you guys like, respecting each other, being so friendly to each other. So thank you so much for making it so memorable and for just creating that lovely atmosphere for everyone. 
and the secret film was... It was synchronic, we were right. Yes, yeah. I'm just so surprised, but oh, this is the best thing ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely superb. I think we shouldn't tell you too much about Synchronic, just that if you get the chance to see it, please do. It's amazing. Um, again, just to mention how I've knocked it out of the park, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It was a very emotive, fantastic story, amazing performances. Um, yeah, you just don't want to know too much going into it because yeah. it is just, it's just the best. It was my favourite film of the festival. It was, it was very good. I'm thinking possibly my favourite film of the year so far. Wow. Maybe. Wow. You guys need to see this movie as soon as it comes out. And to close things off was a film that was absolutely fantastic, which was Little Monsters. It was a love letter to kindergarten teachers and all the hard work they put in, um, like all over the world. And yeah, it was just such a fun film. It was just didn't take itself too seriously. It was just not so funny. Yeah, great, great way to close the festival. Just a, a very fun zombie ride. Surprisingly harsh in places. Yeah, yeah. It was fun though. Uh, Look, Peter the Younger in the lead role is excellent. Uh, yeah. It's just, it was just a blast. A really, really good way to end the festival. Yeah, and that's coming out on November the fifteenth, I believe. Coming it, yes. out to cinema, so yes, it'll be with you guys very soon. And I urge you to go and see it. It's a really fun every um, late night movie or any sort of movie. Really, is I think. Yeah, I think fans of horror and non-horror would like it as well. Definitely. It's yeah. a bit gory, but like if you're not bothered by that and you like sort of black comedy horror, then it's definitely for you. Absolutely. Okay, well thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, as you'll have seen, I have all inserted in um, the uh, winning announcements of the shorts and the features. Um, all well deserved. Again, top festival, just amazing. And uh, we can't wait to be back next year. Yeah, thank you for watching.